there we are. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. You guys... As far as the rest of you know, yeah, it seems as though Lep has just decided to go quiet for now. Um, Mavathor, do you have defi divine sense? Uh, I believe that's only a paladin thing. Only paladin thing. Okay, I was just making sure because some of these caverns, you know, if you had divine sense, you would know something's there. Before you got there sometimes, maybe, but... It's also possible that if I was cruel, I could say that the scab dulls that kind of magic. Um, do you guys want to go uh, continue in the uh, other direction, or... Uh, yeah, you can see that, that up ahead, uh, you know, Kraylee's perched on the edge of the scab as you guys make your way forward you can see as you enter another large sort of 40 foot wide chamber blood streams down from a gaping wound in the ceiling that is filling a large pool that covers the floor of this chamber and uh, there is a big hunk of scab floating in the blood significant in any way uh you can make an investigation check i suppose or perception either Eighteen. you look around the cavern and you can see that it's most likely the, the piece of scab that's floating on the surface of the blood, it looks like it would pretty much fill the shape of where the blood is pooling down into, into the pool from above. And as you're kind of looking up the stream that's flowing down, you know, the membrane of the scab on the upper half, the top 200 feet of it, is, is kind of porous and squishy. And as your vision sort of trains up to look where the scab part has been pulled off, you can see with your dark vision large indentations in the flesh of the scab hand-shaped indentations and as Lep bumbles in behind you guys these three devilish ape-like creatures appear or de demonic uh, ape-like creatures appear that were clinging to the ceiling uh, and in chaotic sounding horrible roars through big fangs uh, <coughs> they begin to hoot and holler their sounds sort of bouncing off the walls of the scab uh, why don't you select your tokens and roll initiative it's demons all the way down Did I get Crayley? Yes, I did. Crayley quickly unshoulders their bow 
and uh, fires a couple shots at one of the creatures perched, hanging from the scab above you all. I'll mark these guys so it's... Takes two quick shots. Oops. One of them doing 23 damage as it sinks into the abdomen of the ape. And Sylvia, you're up. Shatter on the ceiling. Sure. Okay. You can uh, cast it where it would probably get these two and, and the scab. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do it over there. Um, we're gonna do it at first level. Um, it's a DC seventeen con save. Or they take 32 points of damage, and then I believe it's halved if they succeed. Yeah. Uh, one succeeds and one fails. Okay, so the one that succeeds takes 16 damage. 16 is half of 32, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 16 damage. And the other one takes 32. And, uh... Did I make the ceiling collapse? Well, you do blast a big hole in it. And more... Another waterfall of blood begins to flow out of it. Uh, maybe I'll make a uh, check to see if these guys can keep, keep their grip on the ceiling or fall down into the pool. They both uh, like switched from one arm to the other, grabbing into uh -huh. some of the flesh, uh, holding on to the ceiling as another pool of blood starts flowing down, quickly filling the chamber. Uh, we're increasing the speed at which the chamber is filling with blood. Demon monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, one of them leaps with a great force as it does uh, in the air. It uh, tries to slam you uh, after it leaps off the hanging position with its fists. Uh, Sylvie, a 24 and an 18 to hit. Uh, Both. Those are their r low rolls. Mm. Yeah, both hit. Could I do silvery barbs for one of them, or can it only be for other people? No, I think you could do it for yourself. Okay. I'm gonna cast silvery barbs then. Or right. one of those. I will re-roll the first one, which was the higher damage one. Uh, a 17 to hit for the uh, attack roll. Yeah, it's it still hits. Okay. So the and damage the damage the... was lower, so. <laughs> okay. I'll give the um, advantage to luck because I feel bad. <laughs> 14. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna to you this whole episode. 14 piercing damage and. Um, Okay. After the two fists, it also attempts to bite you as it lands, kind of fists at you and stretches to its full height and kind of clomps its chompers up at, at you and uh, a 16 to hit for the bite, which misses. And uh, the other one uh, over there will also do a long... Well, it'll sort of monkey climb... Uh, along, and then um, it'll also 
sort of let go and actually it stops about here and it holds out one of its big paws and it will cast entangle in your area uh dc 13 i believe uh wisdom saving throws for okay. an entangle spell uh which will kind of spring up along the ground here grabbing onto Crayley, Lep, and Mavathor. <laughs> 34 um, wisdom save! <laughs> everyone gets uh, a plus 5. Uh, plus 5 to the wisdom save? Oh yeah, okay, you guys are all fine. No, Tangle uh, does not grasp onto you. And Lep. Uh, your I don't know if Lep does anything. Friends in quotation marks. Uh, I mean, there's the survival <laughs> instinct, so he, he wants to try and help them, but also he's also badly injured. I don't... I I don't really know if he does anything. Yeah, it's okay. I, uh, I, your, yeah, op- just, your options are low, you know what I mean? I think, yeah, like, I don't... I think you save, like, the guarding your friends for some last second heroic act you know <laughs> yeah i think it just stands there <laughs> yeah no, just emotionless just yeah. looking it's gonna take some investigation to realize your uh, condition mavathor yeah well um he is going to try and even the odds a little bit here, and he is going to cast um, Banishment on this one up here. Which is, I believe, let me check it. Yeah, Charisma save. DC 17 Charisma save, and he's going to use one of the charges from his um, Amulet of the Righteous to give it disadvantage on that save. Was it the red guy? Oh, uh, yeah. The one up top. This one up here. Charisma. Fails. Fails. Yep. Banished to the abyss. Um. I, did this one take damage? It has taken damage, yes. Okay. Then, yeah, he'll go ahead and cast uh, Toll the Dead on it. DC 17. Wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, that one passes with an 18. Okay. Um, his shadows will roll up and uh, start to destroy this. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the Belgura. Belgura, uh, yes. Okay. Um, Barl Gura. Two, three, four. Oof, these are kind of low. His but, AC is fifteen. Um, his AC is fifteen. Okay, so that means only one hit um, for ten necrotic damage. Alrighty. And strength score is reduced by one. <laughs> uh, okay. Crayley will fire their bow. Uh, two more times at the one now sort of on the base of the scab. Whoops. Is that enough? 10, 23, 4, 5, 6, 23. No, not enough. Oh, you know what? It is. It's just enough. Uh, two shots, right after one, right after the other, and uh, he tumbles back into the blood. And Sylvie, you're up. Sylvie's gonna come in from above. Uh, well, I guess not. She can't really come in from above. She's gonna come in from the side. <laughs> <laughs> And she's going to strike 
with both daggers with Fang in her offhand. Oh, wait. I never <laughs> rolled the attack. Uh, Alright, so, uh, Fang hits for 24. Yeah, Fang strikes true. Alright, that's three piercing, and then Moth Shadow Stiletto misses. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> The one uh, that you just uh, went and striked with your daggers, it uh, makes some attacks back in your direction there, Sylvie, so it'll try and hit you with its fist twice. Both of its fists, as you float in the air there, miss, and it tries to chomp out with its big gorilla teeth. Uh, they do actually chomp onto you for 15 piercing damage. Yeah. Uh, they snap out with their big teeth and lap uh, kind of he does nothing yes Mavathor alright um let's see uh, what are my options here this last one has taken no damage yet oh yeah. no it took three it took three damage sorry it took three yeah yeah okay um, yeah, he's gonna go ahead and conjure up a spiritual weapon. Ooh. Crits. <laughs> For, uh, oh, seven force damage. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Um, I don't think the shadows can really reach the Spelgaro. They don't, they don't fly. Uh. They, like, emerge from the ceiling? <laughs> uh, I don't... No, 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 I don't think I can really do that. Um, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Uh, as his action, you know, cast uh, Told the Dead on it. So DC seventeen wisdom. Fail. Okay. Takes sixteen necrotic damage. All right. You. Melt a little bit of the demon's brain. And uh, Cranley will take two quick shots with his bow. Twenty-eight. Thirty-six. Thirty-eight total. And the demon is literally hanging on by a thread. Sylvie? Gonna flick him in the snout, say no bite, and then stab him. <laughs> no bite. Okay. Yep, there you go. Uh, how does the creature perish? Just as I said, the little flick <laughs> <up> the snout. Nice. <laughs> he uh, loses his grip as you uh, drive. Uh, shadow, moss shadow into one of his eyes, and uh, he uh, falls with a splash into the pool of blood. Uh, now, two um, little funnels of blood pouring down into the pool below. Um, I'm Mavathor, I imagine you just hold on to the banish until uh, the creature is returned mm -hmm. to the abyss. Yep. And uh, it appears as though you have all found. Another dead end inside of the scab. So I will return you to the last path available near the window. 
Uh, the one where the buzzing sound is a little less audible. Who would like to be in front? I can have Crayley, or if one of you want to volunteer. Up is behind everyone. Yeah. On the way back, I was going to look at left and was like, you were unusually not active during that uh, fight. What happened? Lev uh, looks at you, but yeah, go doesn't ahead. Yeah. do anything. Mavithor, we're making an insight check. Okay. There's a dull look in uh, Lep's usually lively, More, uh, lively eyes. You know, he has... More than usual. Yes, uh... uh um, you can definitely tell, even with an 11, that uh, there's something not quite right about him, uh, his demeanor currently. Mm. And it is, it is it is indeed unusual for him to not have a, a, a response or, or a retort for you. Maybe he's just sad. About what? I mean, his best friend died. I mean, yeah, but he was unusually verbose before that happened and after it happened, so why the sun shift in the True. caricature? Uh, Lulu has been kind of quiet since you've all entered the scab, uh, staying out of the way when you come in contact with demons. Um, she peeps up a little bit and she says um I know what was in that vial he drank it was water from the river Styx uh well that's not good um it was gonna happen eventually <laughs> She says, um, I didn't say anything because I want to find Zariel's sword, but I've noticed that some of you have undergone some changes. And I didn't want to bring it up. I imagine that these things happened to you while trying to save me. So I'm trying not to be judgmental. But I can tell that two of you are dead. What happened? tried to go save my sister's soul um and then yeah well first we tried to save you that's how i died because we were trying to get the rods or wait no it was before the rods there was a lot that happened okay <laughs> point is yeah, I kind of died when we were trying to save you. And Kraby kind of died not too long ago. But we both, I guess, kind of made a deal with Belle and got risen from the dead. Lulu says, I haven't said this properly but you all have gone to great lengths in my quest to recover my memories in my attempt to restore Zariel to 
true being. I have been inspired by you and your bravery. When the, I've seen the bravery of so many others falter. But I have to ask. Even if it was to try to save me, why was it so easy for you to make a deal with Lord Bell, but not go out of your way to help more directly Zario, whose single-minded mission is simply to save us all. And she kind of like looks at uh, Crayley out of the corner of her eye. And then looks back at the rest of you. That bitch is giving she says, um, she says, you know, actually, that's not a fair question to ask. Even now, you clamor through these halls of blood with me to try and find Zariel's sword. It is I that owe you more than I can express, and I intend to repay these debts in full when... Our mission is done. And she sort of like looks down at the husk of blood scab and um, she says, I'm sorry that I've caused these horrible things to happen to you. And I hope that one day I can find the proper words to express to you the gratitude I truly feel. And she becomes kind of stern and she says, I know we're getting close. This is a conversation that we can finish another day. And uh, she floats ahead of um, Crayley a bit. As you guys head down this little passage, uh, the buzzing does kind of get louder. Uh, Arthur does speak up and <clears throat> he says, I don't suppose you happen to know if there's a cure for this uh, affliction for Lep, because believe me, as much as I appreciate this uh, quiet time, um, we do need as many hands as possible to she says um success uh she says um well i know that at least part of my faculties were restored and although i don't remember exactly how that happened i know that drinking water from the river styx can do terrible things to someone and those changes it can make eventually become permanent if something's not done. There's probably some magic that could help. Something powerful, most likely. You know, as and says, yeah, I'll try something. Still might not be strong enough cleric for this, but it's worth a shot, and uh, I'll approach Lab and uh, use Greater Restoration on him. Let me uh, just double check one thing real quick and make sure there's not some kind of special condition about Sticks Water. <laughs> But I th am fairly confident that it will work. Where the heck did my 
Oh, there we go. Um, Lep, uh, you, is Fuel Mind a touch spell, or is Greater Restoration a touch spell? Um, let me check real quick. I believe it is. I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah, let's touch. You're kind of staring blankly out, um, and, uh, you feel, you know, Mavathor's hand fall on your shoulder and as uh, he casts a greater restoration spell on you uh, you you feel all your mental faculties sort of begin to slowly return uh, the the feel of Mavathor's hand on your shoulder becomes more vivid and as, as as does everything else around you and suddenly you sort of remember who you are, where you are um that stares blankly at you Mavathor for a bit and then a small smirk comes on his face as he starts laughing Oh, I think he's fixed. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you, Mabathor. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five. Uh, you guys see um, as you scurry down this blood tunnel that uh, there's another maybe 30, 25, 30 foot drop. Uh, when you kind of float down. A few feet there, Mawithor and Sylvie, uh, off to one side. You can... It's almost... Well, you're assaulted first by the explosion of buzzing. And some distance away from you, it's almost as if the darkness grows even darker. And it is like the darkness is writhing. Uh, thousands of... Uh, a, a horde of, of hellish flies buzzing around this dark chamber. Uh, you see that it's strewn with mutilated devil corpses and gnawed bones below you. Uh, and you can see that it's possible there's more pathways in the direction of the buzzing and also one in the opposite way. We should avoid the bugs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It feels like every opportunity we took to avoid them somehow led us to a dead end. I think we should go after them. We're gonna go for the bugs. Let's explore this one last uh, option before uh, we commit to fighting these things. Lep puts his hands up and says, "Yay, flesh eating bugs!" And he falls down. <laughs> well, he tips over. I guess what I should say over the edge. Um. And uh, oh, as you make your way in the other direction over the hum of the horde of insects, uh, why don't you guys give me another perception check? Was that 29 from just now? 
Yeah. Uh, 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 um, you guys can hear uh, over the the sound of the bu- insects. Uh, it's like it sounds like um. <laughs> It sounds like something's mining. Like you hear the clinking of of something hitting against stone with pickaxes or something. Clink, 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 clink. Sort of a rapid uh, clinking sound, succession, a rhythm. I think this might be the right way. If they're uh, trying to dig down, I imagine they're trying to get to where Zario's sword is. Lulu. Digging down. Uh, uh, kind of dig down. Lulu's kind of hovering over the top of the two of you, and she stops in her tracks, and she says, No. It, 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 it can't be. Oh. It's it. Um, and uh, you can see Lulu's like trembling. Try to be a little bit more descriptive here. Lulu says, "It's the demon lord, Yanogu's pet, Krokektuak." And she What's begins that? to s- describe in a whisper this vision of a creature from beyond nightmares. This twisted, ravenous, faceless, fur covered abomination with a hunger greater than maybe any creature ever known to spawn from the abyss. And she describes a a, a thing uh, that looks kind of like this. Mm. (laughs) Zach weirdly likes it. (laughs) Like, okay, okay. So we're going to go down there, right? (laughs) Lulu says... Um. They can't be trying to dig it out. Well, I guess they could be because they're demons. And it's a demon, so. We have to. My question is why would they? What what strategic purpose does uh, having the Sword of Zariel have for the demons? I mean, yeah, but that doesn't seem like it'd be a strategic option when winning the Blood War first be a good option well lulu says no i i can tell it it's trapped it can't move they're trying to dig it out so what you're saying is we should try and stop them so that uh Yunogu loses a strategic piece in this war and we should do it quickly Woo! let's go <laughs> kill some demon miners <laughs> let's jump down whatever hole Nice. Oh, runs ahead. Just say. Yeah, you head over. You squeeze through, and you do happen to instantly drop down another sort of drop off. Uh, unless you want to make like a, a yeah, there you go. You fall. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. You fall. Uh, <laughs> did, you, did you take falling damage? Uh, you do actually. Five, ten, fifteen. Um, here. Uh, no, not fifteen. Uh, just three d six. I was counting squares. Okay, did he also take fall- falling damage from earlier? No, the 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 the, the, uh, the scab is still squishy f- just behind you, but when you drop down here, uh, the f- scab, uh, you reach that level where the scab becomes hard as rock. Okay. Well, let's hope he doesn't die. Uh, you guys see a group of dretches. Um, being commanded, uh, barked at in abyssal 
by a shadow demon. These little beasts are clinking oh, away, dear. clinking at, away at the scab uh, with claws and digging tools. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that maybe they're all surprised. Why don't you guys take a surprise round? Ooh. So do we still roll initiative, or do we just... Uh, we'll see if they survive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Crayley is going to... Uh... Hop down behind you all, and he'll he's gonna make his way over here, and then from here, he's going to thunder step back up here and thunder step all those guys. And that's the shadow demon that he was right next to? Yep. Okay. Uh, so he makes his way over there. He takes one opportunity attack from a dretch to get into the space where he can thunder step, and then he thunder steps back to the top up there. Uh, let's see. I think it's a DC f 14 for the thunder step. I just got to check the damage. Uh, 3d10. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, and left that twelve is your falling damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, would 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 left know if 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 demons are or shadow demons specifically are resistance resistant to um necrotic? Uh, you lep oh, we... have not fought a shadow demon before, right? No. Uh, you can make an intelligence check. Okay. Creatures of shadow do exist in the Feywild. Twelve. Uh, you're not certain. Okay, he's gonna cast Blight on that, uh, shadow demon. Okay, uh, you can make an insight check now okay. that you cast a spell on it. Uh, while I make their save... Uh, you've just learned that shadow demons are, in fact, resistant to necrotic damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good damage. Uh, 41 halved, right? If they save, yeah. they did do save with a 20. Uh, so 20 damage. Oh. It's still good. Yeah. Crayley, uh takes out two of the dretches and damages the shadow demon as well. Uh, so Sylvia and Mavathor, you guys can take a take a turn, a surprise turn. Sylvia's gonna cast antagonize on the shadow demon. So it's a wisdom saving throw. They have to be a seventeen. Natural one. It takes. For ten damage, would it double? Would it double since it's a nat one, right? To be twenty damage? No. No, no. No, it's just ten. Um, and then it uses its reaction to make a melee attack against another creature of my choice. Oh, nice. Does the creature uh, have to be within reach of it? Or will it move to do this? Uh, yeah, it has to be within reach. Um, so instead it has disadvantage on the next attack roll before the start of my next turn. Okay, it has disadvantage then. Okay. Because uh, awesome. nothing alive is within five. It is within five feet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, okay. The Shadow Demon is certainly bloodied. Uh, Malthor is going to cast Spirit Guardians. Roll the damage. Okay. Mini Mavathors, <laughs> save me! All right. Ten. What is that? A, a 15 foot radius, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a wisdom save. Yeah, all these stretches around you will take the 10. Okay. And he'll move over they here. Are, uh, they are all bloodied. To include the uh, Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon, okay. Shadow Demon will take 10. And yeah, that's that'll be the end of his turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to just have all the dretches make attacks, and then you guys can all go again, because spending time on initiative uh, will not really be worth it. Dretch uh, tries to... Uh, well, a dretch will, like, leap off and try and bite you as it leaps off the side of the wall there. Uh, Sylvie kind of... Well... I'll, I'll see if I can grab on you first. No, he can't. So he uh, try, he jumps off, tries to grab on you with his claws for a bite, and and then falls to the ground. Um, one one of these ones does a little jump and tries to claw at you. Same with you, Mavathor. They both are like leaping up and trying to claw at your feet. Uh, those two dretches will. Uh, one of them rolls an 18 as their low roll to hit you, Sylvie. So you take four slashing. Okay. Uh, the other one misses you, Mavathor, for sure. And. Uh... Oh, I guess the one beside you. Uh, none of them attacked me? Oh my yeah, God. no, one of them does. One tries to bite and claw. Oh. And up. Yeah. Three, th three slashing damage from a. a the one to your left. Okay. And, uh... The demon's, like, yelling something in abyssal. Uh, you guys can't see it, but there's a dretch below who disappears into the darkness away from you. <laughs> uh... Okay, why don't you guys all go ahead? Oh, you know what? I don't... Oh, yeah. Crayley will shoot two of the dretches. Uh, just putting arrows in the tops of their heads. Um, roll your damage again, Mavathor. Okay. 21. Yeah, that would have been good <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> you shred the rest of them. And uh, Lulu says, um, we're close. I know it. To the demon dog? No. Uh, demon she, pet? She says, um, the entrance to the citadel. We're, we're so close now. Which way do we go? Uh, Lulu, uh, she points with her trunk off in the direction of where Sylvie is. Um, she says... Let's once uh, again run. She says, um... It's here, though. Below us. Yanagu's pet. It must be enveloped by the scab. I wonder how it even got here. All right, you guys can stop at the little edge there, and I will describe what you see. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does any of it you have really like sad. extra dark vision? Do any of you have like one twenty? I think the only one who has is uh, Crayley. Oh yeah, Crayley. Actually, do I get it? I don't know. Let me check. Oh, I have six. Oh yeah, Crayley. I think does have devil sight from something 
Do uh, I get devil uh, type the sword? Because I'm not proficient in that weapon type, but I am carrying the sword. You would have to be attuned to it. Okay. Then, yeah. uh, okay. Down below, with his devil sight, Curly describes what is beyond the darkness. Um, you guys can see a bit of it, but there are a pair of... Uh, let's see how far below you is it. About 80 feet below you. There is a pair of brass double doors that stand exposed in the wall of the scab. An image uh, on the doors depicts a blindfolded angel wielding a sword. She's holding it above her head. And carved... In the door frame are these beautiful golden inlaid runes and these are faintly glowing that's what you can see beyond the darkness these little glowing runes sort of in an arch like in lord of the rings the elven door that goes into more or uh the mines of moria or whatever you know uh Crayley says that um there are three goat-headed demons with barbed tails throwing themselves against the door and there is a rotund ape-like fiend with big tusks and tiny wings that's kicking at them. You can hear the, you can hear him actually. He's roaring commands in abyssal. Um Now we can do one of two things. We can end the session here, or you guys can have a converse, confrontation at the gates of the entrance to the Bleeding Citadel. Um, Lep is just gonna say, I really hope nobody pushes me off. <laughs> uh, um, Curly does say... I've Crayley does say, uh, one of those dretches must have escaped. It's a s little pile of splattered meat on the floor. It must have lost its, lost its grip trying to climb down to warn them. Honestly, I would like to, co to confront them, but I'm also okay if we end the session. Yeah, I feel like uh, we should have Crayley here for this. Okay, yeah, it sounds good to me too. Uh, you guys find the entrance to the Bleeding Citadel, uh, a giant brass door wreathed in these glowing runes. Um, I, I, I suppose, I mean, you know, uh, Mavathor, you have a uh, respectable knowledge of devils and demons. Um, I say that you probably recognize what this creature is, uh, a Nalfeshni. Oh. And it is shouting, yes, commanding, boy. beckoning, prodding uh, three fellows out to uh, beat themselves against the door. They seem to all be frustrated by the sound and look of them uh, that they cannot find a way to open the doors. Demons are so dumb. <laughs> uh, and that is where we'll end the session this week at the gates of the Bleeding Citadel. It's good to be back. I'll be quite honest. I did miss not playing D&D &D last Wednesday. <laughs> uh, it was a strange feeling. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I mean, the, this campaign... I, 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 I was thinking about this... And I think that this is the most consistent campaign that I've ever ran. I think we've only really ever missed three weeks of 34 weeks of play where, where there was an off week. And I really do think that's the most consistent campaign I, I've ever ran before. Uh, so, you know, that I mean, and that's all attributed to, to you guys, you know, because I can't run a game if there's no players to do it. So uh, I appreciate I mean... your guys' consistency. <laughs> Because it has really been fun to, to, you know, never lose momentum. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate you as the DM. I always, every yeah. session, I a smile on my face. At the end. It's, so, it's fun. I enjoy uh, it. Oh, man, I was, I was a little nervous when you drank that vial. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I, this technically I mean, could end very poorly for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I... Without without Crayley here, I, I I didn't really know what Philip to do because I was all planning on him just being pissed off at Crayley. What level uh, is uh? Good. What level spells greater restoration? Is it level six or five? Uh, five. Level five. Okay, so you would have had it. <clears throat> yeah, it could have uh been nasty. If Mavathor wasn't yeah. feeling compassionate, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it is true. You guys will probably need him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, hey, Twig is not here anymore. It's so sad. Yeah, that was surprising too, but also kind of fun. Um, I, you know, to, Lep is getting all like kind of crazy. You know, I, I think, I think it's just. I, I would say that if you guys didn't all turn a little evil after spending some time in Avernus, I'm not doing a very good job as the dungeon master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, for sure. It's, it's, I'm, I've really, you know, enjoyed this campaign. You guys have been really great players. I, I, and we're, you know, we're approaching the end. And so a part of me is <gasps> also kind of, there's a little part of me, much like, um, as Medeus, I've got a little flicker of sadness deep within me that knows that no. sooner or later this adventure will reach some kind of conclusion. But I think it also there are, there are many ways for it to also end very well, and uh, and it'll be interesting. And they're all things that I'm still still very excited for. But it is good to be back. It was tough to miss that week because uh, you know I just like playing with you guys. So I'll catch you guys uh, next Wednesday. I I, I do think. That, um, actually, I'm going to stop my recording real quick.